Hey, what's happening guys? I hope you all had a great Halloween. Last week we did a, a classic circuit you should know, which was uh, basically like a delayed off circuit. And I got a lot of requests to do a delayed on circuit or a delay start circuit. So that is what we're doing here. And we are doing this with our favorite IC in the whole world, the 555 timer. I challenge you to come up with another IC found in as many circuits as the 555 timer. And you can't just say an op amp. There's a million op amps out there. Find me a specific IC used in as many circuits as a 555 timer, and you will win my admiration. I know it's not much of a prize, but hey, it's something. Anyway, the delayed start circuit, and at the values we have here in this circuit, it's going to give you about 10 seconds of a delayed start. So how does it work? Well, it works really simply. We have a switch. When you switch the switch on, current is going to flow from VCC. In this case, we're using 6 volts. It is going to flow to two places at once. It is going to flow in and power the 555 timer, and then it's going to come over here and charge this 1000 microfarad capacitor. When it charges, it is going to hit the trigger pin of the 555 timer, and that will output a signal on the output pin, pin 3, which in this case is simply hooked up to an LED with a 510 ohm resistor. You know, use whatever resistor you want for the voltage, you know, so you don't burn out your LED or your retinas, you know. That was, those LEDs can get quite bright. Now you'll notice there is nothing connected to the reset pin, nothing connected to the CV pin, and nothing connected to pin 7. They're just not needed because what we're doing here is basically a takeoff or a play on the monostable 555 timer. So there's the diagram, and here's the circuit. There's our 1000 microfarad capacitor. That's a 10K resistor, I forgot to tell you. There's our 10K resistor. Now what you're gonna notice is here's VCC coming in and it feeds one side of the switch. From the other side of the switch, it goes directly to pin eight of the 555 timer. And it also goes to the anode of this 1000 microfarad capacitor, which I'm sure says 1000 microfarads on it somewhere. Yes, right there. Then the cathode of that goes over to pin 2, which is, of course, connected to pin 6. And it also goes through this 10K resistor directly to ground. Then the output here, we have that 510K resistor going to the anode of that LED and the cathode going directly to ground. There is our power supply at 6 volts. So let's power it up. Always connecting our grounds first so that our circuit is equal potential to anything it may be connected to. Switches off and we have nothing. Switch is kind of flimsy so I have to hold it with one hand. Power it on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it pops on. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So, thanks for watching. That's all I got to say for today. No, no, no. We'll go into it a little bit deeper. I mean, powering an LED is fine. And if we come over here and we look at the power supply, you can see it's not even drawn enough current to be uh, noticed. In fact, let's find out exactly what current it is drawing. We'll bring in a, uh, bring in a meter here. One second. Uh, dexterous, dexterous, whatever the word is, I am. So we've got our meter hooked up for DC current. So we can get in there like that. I'll flick the switch. So we're pulling about three and a half millivolts. Let's see what happens when the LED switches on. 
Of course, I probably just killed it. What happens when it switches on? 7.37 milliamps. So, yeah, not a whole lot going on there. But, you know, of course, if you want to power something more powerful than a little LED, well then, always put your probe leads back. You don't want to leave them in the current position. That's a direct short through your meter. If we want to put something else in there, uh, a little bit more powerful than that, we're going to have to make a couple changes. Nothing big, but a couple of changes nonetheless. So let's say you want to light a 12 volt lamp. I mean, that should give us some decent current draw, right? Let's power it up. And we're looking at 230 milliamps at 12 volts. 12 volts is in the uh, range of the 555 timer, so this can work. So what we need to do is pull out our current limiting resistor and our load, which is that LED. And we are going to replace that with the bulb. I don't, I'm not quite sure if it can drive 230 milliamps, but it's not a good idea. So we're not going to do that. What we're going to do instead is use a simple MOSFET. So I'm going to put our MOSFET up here like so. And from left to right, it is gate, drain, and source. And then we're going to need a wire to connect from our output here at pin 3 to connect into the gate. I'll go up this way, make it easy. And then we are going to need one more wire. Do I have one of a suitable color? Yeah, give me one second. Remember, when dealing with an end channel MOSFET, it's drain from source to. So, gate, drain, we're going to drain from VCC. And we are going to source to our bulb and get everything copacetic in here. I think we're making contact, but I can't tell for sure. Hey, you know how we'll know? If it doesn't work, that's how we'll know. We need to go to ground. Yeah, can't quite tell if it's in there. Well, let's find out. Ground, VCC, and power. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, and she's on. Very nicely done. So that's how you can drive something of higher output, so it's a higher, you, so something requiring a higher current than the 555 timer is able to output. Simply use a MOSFET. Now, another consideration to keep in mind is if you're going to use something that is a non-resistive load or an inductive load, like a motor or even a relay, protect the IC with a diode so we don't get any back flush of current through there to, you know, just mung it all up, right? Right. So that's it. A delayed start circuit of about 10 seconds. Change your delay, change the capacitor. That's all you got to do. It's super simple. A monkey could do it. I am a bearded monkey, and I did it. So, that's all I've got for you guys today. If you enjoyed this, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all my patrons. Big thanks to you, and you, and you, and you. That's it. I'm out. Peace.